I'm having a lot of fun with the mini lathe I got for Christmas. If you haven't seen them, check out my review of the mini lathe and my Pokey Things project. The tools that came with the kit were made of thin metal and were difficult to produce good results with. I modified some old files and screwdrivers to use on my Pokey Things project. I waited until I had a good coupon and I picked up these two chisel sets from Harbor Freight. The sets came with a few flat chisels that I'll use as is. I sharpened the other side of this one to a point. And I shaped a couple into a rounded tip. And this one I modified to cut a bead. The tool rest that came with the mini lathe had some drawbacks. It can't be adjusted close to the work. And reaching between the work and the rest to tighten the screw is inconvenient. So I got a piece of angle iron and cut one leg down to the correct height for the rest. I cut a slot in the long leg so that it reaches the far groove in the base. I modified a hex nut to fit in the groove. I also ground down the head of the bolt to improve clearance. Now I can set the tool rest close to the work and adjust it with a wrench from the back. For this project, I used inch and a quarter diameter poplar dowel. I marked the center and then center drilled both ends. I drilled one end with a 1364 spit. I found that drilling a little, then turning the dowel and drilling a little more gave me the straightest hole. I used my 1x30 sander to put a point on the end of the bit driver hex shank. Then I whacked the bit into the dowel. The quarter inch hex was a nice tight fit in the 1364 hole. I cut a piece of quarter inch hex off of an Allen key to chuck the bit driver and dowel into the mini lathe. It ran pretty true. I wanted to make a handle like this North Brothers screwdriver. I needed to come up with a way to cut the flutes. I talked it over with Chuck and he drew me some templates with CAD that I could glue onto the dowel. Here's one of Chuck's templates glued on. I was hoping this would help me keep the flute straight and evenly spaced. I started each flute with a shallow hacksaw cut. Then I used a round file to open up the grooves. I think the fluting came out pretty good.
So what do you think? I think I got pretty close. I also tried to copy the classic Craftsman handle design. I wanted to try to make a honey dipper style handle. I used the chisel I modified for beading. Here's my handle next to a tiny honey dipper style screwdriver. I like the shape of these handles made by Elkhead Tools. I wanted to try to make a similar bit driver handle. The wood chipped a little during turning. I repaired the area with quick wood putty. I think it came out pretty close. I've been having trouble getting poplar to stain evenly. This time I tried using pre-stained wood conditioner. It still turned out horrible. Good thing I had a plan B. Here's one of the bit drivers hanging out with some vintage North Brothers screwdrivers that inspired the design. I think my classic Craftsman inspired handle turned out pretty good. Here's my Honey Dipper bit driver. Plan B was Bombay Mahogany. I also chose Bombay Mahogany for my Elkhead Tools inspired bit driver. I made Chuck this little bowl as a thank you for helping me with the fluting. Do you like it Chuck? When I got this mini lathe, I was hoping it would enable me to make custom tool handles. I feel like the improved tool rest and the modified chisels have got me there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. You have the wood dowel clamped in the vise. I have a piece of quarter inch hex stock put in there. I have a torque wrench with a quarter inch socket. I have the torque wrench set at 50 inch pounds. Let's see what happens. Now I drew a line on the shaft and on the dowel so I can watch to see if this shaft starts to spin in the wood. Okay, that's 50 inch pounds. Nothing's happening. Let's go to how about 80? Let's go to 80 inch pounds. I 
think that's 70. There. 80 inch pounds. See what happens. I'm not seeing any movement between the shaft and the wood dowel. Let's go, um, let's go 100. So that's 100 inch pounds. I'm watching the black line I have on the shaft and the black line I have on the dowel and see if they move. Okay, I'm, I got some movement there. I'm going to zoom you up. Hold on, here we go. That's in focus. I hope you can see it move. Looks like it moved a little bit and then stopped moving. Let me take it up another ten another ten inch pounds. Go to uh, let's go up to one hundred and ten. I'm really close. Wow, there you go. 110. Let's try that. Let me zoom you back. How about right there? Let's try right there. Okay, now this is 110. Okay, definitely, it's definitely moving it. Yeah, there, see? I'm spinning free now. Okay. So between 100 and 110 inch pounds is when this, this started to fail. I'm curious to know what 110 inch pounds feels like with a normal factory screwdriver. So I have the same piece of Allen key. I'm going to see if I can make the torque wrench click. It's still set at 110 inch pounds. Oh, I can't do it one handed. I can do it two handed. That's a good amount of torque. 